Mambi. I'm a member of parliament of Mawokota County South. I'm also the whip of FDC in parliament. We are 31 members of parliament after the demise of uh, Honorable Cecilia. And uh, out of the 34, I talked and consulted uh, around uh, 21 members of parliament. And it is a great opportunity for us to present our views uh, on this matter because we believe we are stakeholders. Uh, Honorable Chair, I don't know whether I should uh, start giving my presentation again. Okay. As a, as a have a brief uh, write up which I want to lay on the table. And then yes, I will just highlight a few areas. So I also have copies for, for, for members. Okay. Yes, Honorable Chair, uh, I'll be very brief and look at clause by clause. The general areas, I'll give a very, uh, just a general comment. Specifically, Honorable Chair, we are concerned with what the mover referred to under 1.0 objective of the bill. We believe is blowing both hot and cold by recognizing the principle of democracy that there must be a lead of opposition by a party with a numerical strength, but at the same time subjecting the party's will to election by members of parliament of opposition parties. So I think you should have really considered that this determination of a lead of opposition has to be by the party. And that is very positive. But at the same time, now uh, subjecting this will and discretion to an election of members of parliament of what refers as to opposition. And under our 2.0, when talking about the defects in the existing legislation, I think uh, his view is misconceived and the poor interpretation of the law. Because if you look at Article 82A and Section 8 of the Act, the wording opposition does not exist. It's my submission that it's a misnomer to talk about opposition. It does not exist under our, our law. You have opposition parties. So conscripting all opposition parties as opposition, that has never been uh, the spirit of the law. And we invite this committee to look at the debates uh, when Parliament was amending the Constitution to create 882A and the Act itself. So, uh, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members, if you look at the Act, the definition of opposition, it does not talk about opposition parties. It talks about the party in opposition. So to say there is opposition, that has been a very big mistake. We are parties in opposition. Why? We have separate manifestos. We come here differently. We actually elected different as FDC, but not as opposition. So now this amendment, you don't have to amend because the law is clear. He's talking about the party in opposition, meaning the party with the second numerical strength is the party in opposition, it should appoint the LOP. Why? Because they have the alternative policy and they should really be the ones doing the checks. You not now call all the other parties because there is no forum for you to do that. And uh, this can be really uh, seen when you look at the debates creating the office of lead of opposition and also the debates in the act are operationalizing the constitutional provision. That is the first point. And we have specified this, these arguments uh, under 2.0 up to 2.4. Uh, Honorable Chair, the other point wanted to 
talk about, I think, which has been uh, highlighted by uh, my party in the party paper presented here, and submission by the president, that specifically, this was not meant to create some bit of representation of members of parliament and a discussion forum. It was actually meant to ensure that alternative policy outside parliament is coordinated by a leader in parliament, specifically to keep government in check. And if you look at section 6E of the act, and uh, again 6.4, specifically it is clear, it is not giving this mandate to opposition political parties. It is actually creating alternative government in parliament. And that cannot be vested in a person who is appointed, uh, what Honorable Rumu talked about democratically, by all these other political parties. Uh, then, Honorable Chair, under uh, 2.4, uh, I observe that the issue of representation cannot be implemented without confusion or disruption. We are all members of parliament. Honorable Chair, I worked in a bank for quite some time and a group of companies from the age of 24, about eight companies. I've taught law for over 27 years. I've been in private practice for over 30, but I've never worked in a difficult and challenging institution like a parliament. <laughs> uh, I've never. Uh, I came here when I was 81 kilograms without anything, not sickness. I, I, within six months, I deteriorated to 64. <laughs> and it's still going down. <laughs> so, so what we are talking about, uh, uh, you see, electing a leader of opposition by political parties, it is going to cause disruption. Uh, uh, in the this institution is not very easy. Mm. <laughs> it, it is, uh, so... <laughs> so <laughs> So, so, you know, Chair, it is now very apparent that uh, a senior colleague is going down and is deteriorating. Are we proceeding? Why? I don't know whether in the current state that is in, whether we are help proceeding uh, uh, right. Uh, that uh, is. Uh, <laughs> All right, Chair, thank you. Very much. Uh, I'm not actually sure. But the if we are going down, are we safe? <laughs> actually, the state so, that would come in dispute would only be mental. And he has not so, uh, so what, to so that. So what I'm saying, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members, uh, yeah, that uh, really subjecting election of such an important leader who is supposed to now pass on government, uh, alternative government policy, and do all the checks in the hands of different political parties with different manifestos, actually with, with different challenges. They, they have even their own political issues internally. Uh, so I think that is going to cause more confusion uh, in Parliament. And it is our submission that actually uh, the lead of opposition should be by uh, the party with the second numerical strength. Having made that point, I just want to note, we also have people like independents. Now, if you go with this kind of uh, argument and justification, as Honorary Rumo is talking about, then you also have independents. Actually, now independents are more than uh, other political parties. So uh, I think the idea has nothing to do with representation. In fact, when you look at this act, if you have issues, it goes to your whips. Uh, and the law is very clear. Each party has whips. If you have now matters at that level, then you harmonize your positions in the different parties through your whips. Uh, I'm a whip myself. It is a, a weak office, but the weakness is the administrative, and that can be handled without legislating and conscripting all parties as opposition. No, it is impossible. Personally, I came here as FDC. You cannot, you cannot conscript me as opposition to have common positions under opposition when the law did not envisage this. Uh, then, uh, Honorable Chair, we made comments on page three about clause 3, 4, 4B. 
uh, I think the same arguments up, uh, request that should be adopted, uh, Mitatis Matandis. Uh, then, Honorable Chair, because I just have a few minutes, we made bullet forms from page four up to seven. There are just seven pages. I just want to talk about uh, summary about those bullet points. Our general concerns about the bill, uh, the law or the constitution envisage a coalition government. So what meant with the government? Uh, electoral college members to, to, to sit and appoint a leader of opposition. We've just had Honorable Mao here. I don't know whether he's cohabiting already married to, to, to the narrow. <laughs> But, but, but in such a situation now, if you have now a member, with all due respect, because he's now a member of the opposition, with the powers to appoint a leader of opposition, but you don't know whether he's cohabiting or really married. So in such a situation, we have individuals cohabiting with the government, or those who are actually married to government, or those who have entered into a coalition under uh, Article 69, what happens in such a situation? Uh, then we also have a situation where issues of party discipline in a multi-party dispensation, if the leader of opposition is not really behaving or not yet towing but agreeing with the party position, then you have a problem, a very big one. And you say, no, you have no control over me. I was elected by by members of parliament. It really is quite different because now if the chief whip or the leader of government business, the prime minister, is in this print, the president can easily say, I've reshuffled. So here, now the mandate is with the parliament and you have no control. So it is a big problem also which you have to look at. Then, Mr. Honorable Chair, under our Clause 6 on page 4. There are circumstances where they have the minority of the minority who may not agree with the majority of the minority. So within, within uh, the minority parties or the, on, the, on the opposition, as we call it generally, they may not agree with the majority party, I'll give an example. Now UNUP is the, the majority of the minority. But then you have a party like a GMA with one, one MP. It is in the minority. So you find that entire group of the minority, of, 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 you understand what I'm talking about, the minority of the minority, now disagreeing with the majority of the minority. Uh, it's, it's a problem. You find now NUP is in charge, is the majority of the minority, but then you find a grouping of, of other parties, the minority of the minority, now c controlling the majority of the minority. So it doesn't really make, make, make sense legally. And now you are legislating to give powers to parties which you are really representing the minority of the minority to control the majority of the minority. So there is really a very big problem. Then... Um, then we were not consulted. That is another problem, even as whips. Actually, Honorable Rumu is the de facto whip of what? Of DP. But even at our level, informally, Honorable Rumu has never talked to us. So we were really wondering what is the genesis and the purpose of this bill. You know, he's now stampeding the bill as if he's representing and protecting opposition, but, but he has never had the courtesy of even talking to us. And he's the de facto, actually, he's the de facto whip of DP, with all due respect. So I, I think that one we cannot associate with a bill where there was no consultation. Uh, then, Honorable uh, Chair, I think I'm about, because I have all, I have other comments to talk about. But I think they are represented here. Uh, uh, the bill goes against practices in the Commonwealth. 
we cited UK, Ghana, India, Tanzania, and Kenya, South Africa, where the party having the greatest numerical strength designates a leader. Uh, there's no constitutional provision creating opposition, so conscript, cons uh, conscript all opposition parties as opposition. It is uh, imp imp it's not even proper and it's not practical. Uh, at our level, we can consult as politicians, but we should not be conscripted as opposition because it's not workable. And then we suggest that the party with the second numerical strength should be given the power to designate. We should not undermine the strength of such political party and we should not delink the leadership there from parliamentary control by such a legislation. That's my submission. I, really, I should have given a lot of meat, but uh, there is something no, novel. But uh, I, I, when you look at the debates of uh, the constitutional amendment by uh, the second parliament, uh, and, uh, and even the parliamentary uh, amendment of the, of the act, the spirit really looked at the party with the second numerical strength. It was really meant to ensure that alternative policy can be debated in parliament in a coordinated manner. It must be presented by a person who has some, some bit of authority, uh, ostensible from, from the party. So basically, if you're talking of an amendment now, you cannot do away with that spirit of a constitutional provision because that would be unconstitutional. Then the other point raised by by Honorable Niwagaba, of course, it is, it is a big problem. Person, I believe, uh, without a coalition government, members who are in this government as ministers from different parties, uh, the, the opposition parties, uh, the, their appointment was irregular and void. It is, it is clear. You see, you cannot talk about now a party entering to a memorandum and separate because the party does not belong to the leadership. It belongs, it's an institution. It's, a, it's an institution. That's why it is funded by the state. So you cannot come here and individually and you talk and you get positions that will be now an infringement. Unless maybe you go through your parties in a, a proper organ like a national delegates conference or something and you are really designated and even approve those so-called uh, agreements which you are doing clandestinely as individuals. Otherwise, the party does not belong to you. It is an organ. And that's why actually they say parties must have a constitution, must have this, it must have regular meetings, meaning you must give the parties uh, th th that to get the will and, and direction of, of the people. The directing mind and will should not be reflected in individuals, but it must be reflected in organs. Uh, uh, then, uh, uh, I, I think what well, there's uh, another point on our new galleries. Okay. Okay. So you can now make your concluding remarks in a minute. Concluding remarks, uh, Honorable Chair. Uh, I think. Mm -hmm as political parties in opposition, not as opposition. We should really respect the will of the people as reflected in our democratic elections. So if a party with a second numerical strength is not given the discretion and the power to appoint a leader of opposition, and also to appoint the leadership like shadow cabinet, and also to appoint commissioners representing that party. And you subject this to parliament, whether under the control of presiding officers, like what is happening now, this is going to be disastrous. No one is going to benefit because the purpose of the party in opposition, or what you call opposition, is to create checks and balances. 
And these checks must be controlled by the political will outside the parliament. Like the president is controlling the NRM, which is the, uh, the ruling party in power, by appointing cabinet, by reshuffling cabinet, so we should not interfere with the power of this party with the numerical strength to determine and control leadership on matters of policy in parliament. Honorable Chair, sorry, what are you saying? Honorable Chair, I want first of all to thank you for allowing me to participate uh, in the deliberations of this committee as, uh, <clears throat> because I'm not a member. But I want to learn from my as where the opposition has submitted its position of redesignating members, for example, the commissioner, the chairpersons and deputies of the committee, and the, the rules are very clear. You can redesignate at any time. You make a party makes a submission through its sweep and the lop to the floor of parliament, but these members are held to those positions by, by the speaker. So we, these are the issues that we want to put, you know, we have, want to bring out clearly. This is a, a committee on parliamental and legal affairs, but these matters are keeping on happening, but no one is talking about them. So the fact that we are looking at the Administration of Parliament Act, some of these issues must also come out if you are looking at amendments. I think that's bail. I remember it had the, those, there were additional clauses. We were supposed to have had a reprint. So I want to be guided by you, Chair, whether we subsequently uh, dropped those other. Because I look at the presentation, even of my senior, is strictly on one particular aspect, yet the bill is more than that. There are other four clauses that were included in this bill. Clark, did you supply the... Which I have uh, I've seen we are proceeding with these consultations without those additional clauses. Even him he has come, he has just come on one particular item. No, not one. I, I actually will flick up my presentation. Were, I were talked about all, all the clauses in the bill. There are about eight. Is it about eight? Maybe, maybe, maybe the addition, yeah, but yeah, these yeah. ones, I, I, I really have each and every clause I made a comment. I only yes. specified this mm. because of time constraints. Chair, I don't know whether they supplied it. The clerk says 